I'm talking today to Io Ali, who is the business development consultant for Goal.com. Describe to me what happens in West Africa in relation to Goal.com. What's your role? Uh, my role really is to monetize the huge amount of traffic that Goal.com have in West Africa, and particularly in Nigeria. Um, in terms of uh, web traffic, it's fairly interesting, but in terms of uh, mobile web traffic, uh, Nigeria is uh, between 40 and 50 percent of our page impressions worldwide okay. on, on mobile internet, and it's huge. It's 25 million a month page impressions. That's Strictly just by mobile? Just mobile web. By comparison, what's, what's the volume of PC-based views? It's it's uh, slightly lower. It's about, but PC based, it's about 300,000 to 400,000 users, and it's sort of six, seven million page impressions per month. Okay, and you were, and you were saying that there's a particular category of a kind of hardcore who, who use it five times a week, yeah. and how, yeah, many, how many of them are? And uh, well, for, for the mobile side, there are probably two, 300,000 that use it at least once a day, sometimes more. Right. Um, but it, it's interesting because football um, in this market tends to have that kind of followership where you have, I mean, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a great throwaway statistic that I, I normally use to say that there are more Arsenal fans in Lagos than there are in the United Kingdom. Yes. So that just gives you a, a, an idea of how popular the medium, uh, sorry, the, 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 the football is. And yeah, looking at the market that that that, that Goal.com, that the mobile site of Goal.com kind of uh, appeals to, people who don't have in access to the internet, to you know, fixed line internet, yeah. all the time, which is most people in the country. So, yeah. so what is people's relationship with football? I mean, the game is now an international game, but how how do they how do they see that? Do they see the game through the African players that are there, or well, do yeah, they? I mean, the, the the thing about football, the thing about African players, is that you know, people, your average person in Africa can relate to Michael Essien, can relate to because with football you don't need connections, you don't need education, you don't need you know to be in the right place at the right time. You need talent, skill, hard work, and a little bit of luck. And anyone can have a little bit of luck. You're also an agent too for yeah. African players. What's what's it feel like out there in terms of um, the talent that exists and the number that come to you and go through? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd say this, and this is the, this is one of the reasons I, I uh, became an agent. I actually started out with, with a social enterprise uh, called Score for Africa, which was about Af uh, football as a driver for African development, and uh, we did some fairly, uh, you know basic analysis, 20% of the players in the English Premier League are African. Right. It, this is not insignificant numbers, this is very significant numbers. Um, and we realized, I mean I realized that there is a demand, that there, there's a need. There's a need, you know, because uh, their image and commercial stuff is Africa facing. Uh, I'll give you an example, Didier Drogba, who, yeah, is probably possibly the best known football in the world. I mean, certainly in the top five. Only got a worldwide endorsement deal with Pepsi just before the World Cup right. at 31. Right. So it was pretty late in the day. Pretty late. But Didier has, you know, several endorsement deals in Cote d'Ivoire. So in terms of their, their, their marketability, in terms of where their images, you know, where, mm. the, where, they, where, where their images kind of resonate, it's, it's back home. So that I I, re I thought that there's a gap in the market there, and that's kind of what I concentrate. Now I, I work with all players from everywhere, mm. but yeah, that's kind of what. what Going back to the website gold.com, if the number of people who are regularly using is two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand um, on mobile, we're really at the beginning of the game, aren't we? It's, well, it's, it's, it's two, three hundred thousand use it every day. Yes, uh, they're probably about a similar number that use it twice. A week at least, and there's a similar number that use it once a week, and a similar number that yeah. use it. Yeah. But how is that number going to change? If we were sitting here in say two or three years' time, what's your guess as to? Well, my guess is it's probably going to double. Okay. I, I, my my guess is this: there are 50 million people who watch football regularly yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. Every week. Yeah. So that's what I consider the market to be: 50 million.
Yeah, and of those 50 million, what would be your guess in terms of how many people have? I'd like 20, 30 percent market share. Yeah, yeah, of that that, size. That's kind of what I'd like, in an ideal world. Yes. That's what I'd like. Switching completely subjects, there's been a thread. We're at Mobile Web West Africa. There's been a thread going through the conference which is about the young and the different attitudes of the young. I'm very struck by that, and it, it, it's simply reinforced by this discussion. You're both an outsider and an insider, if you will, in Nigeria. How does that feel, being the age you are in this country? Well, not that young, <laughs> in case you wanted. Yeah. Um, well, you're in it, your 40s at least. Well, thank you. Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> well, I got that right. Right, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, it makes me very hopeful, and it actually makes me very proud if the truth be told. Um, but how will, it, how will it work its way through? Because well, the, this, the, this the, the power this, and the, the this, market share see, and, this, and this control... Is, this, this is a very interesting question. And yes, there is, an, in Nigeria, we're really in a transition phase uh, between one generation and, and the next. Uh, the uh, things that have been driving the Nigerian economy, telecoms, finance, uh, some uh, aspects of... Uh, of um, you know, manufacturing and uh, you know, um, you know things have all been done by by young people. I mean, they're mm. mainly driven by young people. Ali mm. Dangote is mm. in his forties. Femi Otedola is similar yeah. in his forties. Dangote has the, the, uh, done all the cement manufacturing. Cement and sugar yeah. and the, uh, most of the guys who run the banks are in their forties. So there is a transition from you know what I would call the 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 uh, the people who. Um, their main source of, of, of wealth was contracting to government. Yes. Uh, it was essentially the, yeah. the, the oil industry, essentially yeah. the oil industry produced all the money and everyone just contracted the government. Yeah. And this sort of generation where we're actually consumer facing. Yeah. And you know, I, I think one of the things that, that, that has, that does make me extremely proud is the fact that, you know, the whole concept of Niger, for want of a better word, you know, right now, Young people in Nigeria are proud to be Nigerian. You know, yeah. very proud to be Nigerian. Yeah. And that's that's kinda how it should be. And once that and that's translating into culture, you know, mm. because, you know we we talk about technology and we're, we're at a technology conference, so that's yeah. you know, it's interesting to talk about technology. But one thing we need what to matters understand matters though is culture. Culture, that's exactly. How you, that's technology how you is use a part the technology. of culture. Yeah. You know, if you had a, uh, you know if you didn't have why did the telephone become uh, uh, you know, so ubiquitous. Mm. Yeah, uh, the, uh, um, an interesting aside is the word hello. Mm. Hello is an invention of the telephone. Mm. So before the telephone, the word hello did not exist. So no hello, no hello mm. magazine. No mm. hello. <laughs> you know, so it, it's culture that, that actually matters. You know, when people live the way they live and what they do in, in their lives, that that's, you know, kind of what affects culture. And, yeah, and Nigeria is becoming, you know, Interesting enough, you say the young people of Nigeria are probably maturing Nigeria faster than the older generation. Mm. Nigeria. So yeah, that, that's something to be extremely. But you've got that 18 to 35 generation who are absolutely comfortable with certain kinds of technologies and ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. If you look forward 10 years, what what do you imagine that Nigeria will look like as a result of that? Oh, those I, think, people I think I think it's going. I mean, uh, it, it's it, the transformations that have happened in the last 20 years have been ridiculous. Um, I, you know, to give an example, 20 years ago, Lecky was Bush. There was mm. nothing till mm. you got to Chevron. Right. That was it. It was when I say Bush, I mean it was mm. Bush. Now it's developed pretty much all the way mm. <laughs> past Chevron. In fact, um, what is going to happen is you know th th there is something that you know, that that I think more academic research could possibly be done is how intuitive young you know. The, subsequent generations are about technology. Um, the video recorder is a, is, a, is, a, is a great example that when we first had a video recorder, our parents couldn't use the video mm. recorder, we had to set the timers and so on and so forth. And now, you know, you move down to the, you know, the tablets and so on and so forth, mm. and uh, programming and the internet, and you realize that, okay, I'm fairly conversant with technology, but compared to someone who's 18, I'm, mm. you know, I'm a real neophyte. And it's going to, this is something that's going to continue. What technology does and what technology can do for young people, what it is doing for you, I mean, one of the most interesting panelists uh, was the guy from Enough is Enough Nigeria. 
it's going to empower young people. Mm. And, you know, like I said on, on the panel, you know, Nigeria's wealth is in our young people. Mm. And it always has been. And unfortunately, there's a bit of a disconnect between our political leadership. But there's a lack of vision. I mean, mm. let, let's call a spade a spade. They have mm. no vision. And, uh, you know, the country as a whole. So, yes, there, there are certain negative things as well about young people. Yes, you, you could mm. you can argue that. Uh, nothing is ever just you know, black and white, or nothing's ever just good mm. like, uh, or, uh, or, or good and or, or evil. But um, on balance, I'd say, yeah, that things have progressed and things will progress much more rapidly. There, there's going to be, um, yeah, this is crystal ball time. There's going, things are going to reach critical mass, and there's going to be a tipping point. Mm. Very, uh, um, very phrase de mot. Yeah, very yeah. phrase de mot. <laughs> phrase de jeu. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a tipping point, and uh, y y the young people of the country and the way their way of thinking will become the predominant and the more relevant one. Now, the question that faces uh, certain sections of society is. Can we harness that? You know, the, the, the old saying, "I am their, I am their leader. I must follow them." Um, <laughs> you know, can we harness that? How do we direct that? Yeah. yeah. And you know, what is it that we wish to gain from it? You know, one of the the, the issues that um, is very interesting is that if you look, think of Nigeria, there there are very few national institutions. That when I say national, I mean truly national institutions. Mm. The police are a national institution. It's a negative national issue mm. because we all, our experience of the police, we, the one thing we all mm. have in common is that we've all paid yes. bribes to the police. Yeah. I mean, this Never is trust the police. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the other national institution is NYSC. It's a yeah. national institution, national youth service called a national institution. Um, but apart from that, there are very few other national institutions. Yeah. But the concept of Niger is a national institution as becoming a national institution. And that is a yeah. young person's concept. So, yeah. Is this? It's it. You know, like like they said, like, may you live in interesting times, mm. and we certainly do. Ayo, thanks for talking to me today. Thank you.